Stewart, the basketball coach at the University of Missouri. I've had the great fortune of being able to coach here for 28 years. If you want to be a better coach and teacher, I would like for you to think about something. We all are products of our environment, our heredity, what we see, what we do, what we read, and our experiences. If you will look at your background, you will find that you have played basketball for a certain person, possibly, or you've been associated with someone in basketball. You have read about basketball by someone or by a lot of people, and you've had experiences. All those things have influenced you. You should look and see where your technique of offense has come from. Where has your philosophy of offense? Philosophy is what you want to do. Technique is how you want to do it. If you examine all those areas, you will come up with where your basketball is coming from and where you can take it to. In my own personal background, my offensive part comes from my high school coach, who was an Indiana coach, not a Bobby Knight Indiana coach, a Branch McCracken coach several years ago. C.J. Kessler was the high school basketball coach, and we threw the ball the length of the court. We shot it, and we put four people on the boards. You played fundamentals, 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 but you ran and you shot. It was also tempered then by Tex Winter and the triple post offense. I came into contact with him when I came into the, at that time, Big Seven Conference, now the Big Eight and soon to be the Big 12. But he has had a great influence on my offensive thinking. So if you look at your background, I think that you can come up with some answers of maybe some of the questions that you've had of why you're doing this and why do you want to do that. I said in the opening part that I had been influenced by a Branch McCracken coach. How's this? When's the last time you saw somebody work on a blackboard versus an overhead? But now let me show you some of the things that I think are very important if you're going to have a good offensive structure. Number one, if we would take two items on offense and said these are the only two that you can teach I honestly believe that these are the two everybody would select you must have great spacing we think that ball players should never be more than 12 or 15 feet apart or never closer than 12 or 15 feet together they may start in a position that's different from that but that is the spacing that allows you to play so that one defensive player cannot interrupt another offensive player's style. You don't want them in a position where you can be double teamed. You want to create either no defense or a defense that allows only one defensive player to one offensive man. That is spacing, 12 to 15 feet on the court. 12 to 15 feet. The next area is timing. If a ball player makes a move on a fast break, coming off of a screen, stepping to the basket, stepping to the ball, the timing has to be such that he gets the basketball where he wants it and when he wants it. If you can't do that, then you have missed the best opportunity for a score. All right? Timing then becomes increasingly important as you get good spacing. I said earlier about my offensive influence being from Tex Winter and being from Branch McCracken and my high school coach, C.J. Kessler, which is an Indiana background. I've also been influenced by Mr. Iba and, and Mr. Stalkup, who I played for here at the University of Missouri. Mr. Iba, of course, had a lot of influence and I think gave everybody a, a really a great philosophical look at basketball from a standpoint you've got to get the ball to the basket you've got to get the ball to the center of the floor you've got to reverse the basketball and try to spread the defense 
you've got to take the basketball through and get it to the baseline to flatten out a defense. You've got to play against one of two types of defenses. You're either going to have some pressure or you're going to get a sag. You've got to know that pressure, you don't need anything other than foot racing and a simple screen against that type of defense. But against sagging defenses, which we don't see quite as much now with the three-point play, you need to do more screening so that you can create that good shot and force that defense back into that lane farther. One of the things, though, that we want to do is to show you now on the blackboard how to space your players on the court. We would like, again, for our players to be 12 to 15 feet apart so that if we were going to play what we call an offset, which again goes back to Tex Winter's triple post, we would want the first player we're going to put on here is the, what we call a diagonal position. I'm going to put an X here and put the ball around that individual. We want that player to be in a, in a spot where if you drew a line from a free throw line extended, he would be above that line. If you drew the three point line in and drew it to the top, he would catch, he would be someplace in the angle where those two cross, but we want to make sure that he is above it. Now he is in a position, he can shoot the basketball, he can get to the center of the court, he can make a play, we think, for every individual on the court, and we'll show you where the other individuals are going to be. Now we want to look at the post player, or the pivot man, or the block player, whichever you choose to call him. We want him lined up with the basketball and the basket. So if the basket is here, we want him in a direct line with the basketball and the basket. We would like for him, obviously, to just be outside the lane, and this distance is about 12 to 15 feet from this man. Now we can go to any of the other positions, but I'm going to go in behind him and put this player here across the lane. It is important for him, now again, he's 12 to 15 feet apart, but it's important for him to know that he is the most difficult man on the court to guard. This is the toughest defensive assignment. This man that is guarding this individual has to help with the postman. He has to be able to block him off. He has to be able to catch him, keep him from coming into the center play. He is responsible for everything in the back end if somebody would drive the baseline. So this individual has a, an extremely difficult defensive assignment. Therefore, this man can be a very effective player, making plays for everybody on the court. He is at the side of the lane because we assume that the defensive player with the ball here will come someplace in the lane. And we tell him to use as a guideline where he stands just where he cannot reach the offensive, the defensive player. We would like for him to be in a position where he just does not touch the defensive player so that now he can get to the basket, he can get to the basketball, or he can get up and maybe set a screen, come across and set a screen. The next player we're going to place is the point man. We put him on the point and we make him stand at least one stride or a stride and a half from the top of the circle. The reason we have him do this is because if he stands on top of the circle, just a difference of a step or a step and a half, it allows this defensive player to come here into this position he can help guard this man and he can prevent a pass. But with this player standing here, this defensive player has to make a decision. He's either going to stop this pass, he's going to help with the pass if this man comes across, or he's going to help with the post. So we like for this man to be a stride and a half from the top of the circle. The next position is the corner spot. And we say corner, but we don't play him in the corner. We like for this man to be about a stride or a stride and a half in, and a stride up, or a stride and a half up from the baseline. So that now there is a board left, and I say a board. When you go out on the basketball court, there is usually a, they are usually laid in panels of four by eight. And so we want to leave that panel so that this individual can make cuts down there without going out of bounds. 
If he receives the basketball, he can make a drive down that baseline. So that is the position. So now we have five players on the floor. All of them are in a position where we think that we can throw the ball and have access to every one of them. Most offenses, you can only throw the ball to three people. In this offense, you can throw the ball to the postman, which would be your first pass. You can get the ball maybe to the basket or to this man, which would be the second pass. And you have two perimeter passes here and to the corner so that now you have access to all of your players. It really creates a team concept and situation. I think one of the first things you have to determine is how are you going to play your postman or your block man? Is he a shooter or is he a rebounder and a screener? If he's a shooter, you want to obviously get him to the basketball and then get the ball to him. If he's a screener and a rebounder, then probably what you're going to do is play him away from a basketball. In our situation, we try to recruit someone who we feel, regardless of size, can go inside and play the post or the block position. The first option, obviously, becomes something of just throwing the basketball into that individual and letting him then maneuver for a shot. Sounds very simple. But when defenses then start to double team or complicate things by coming up with some other type of plan of denying that shot, then you have to have other options. Again, this is where we think our spacing helps us make us into a five-man team. If that ball goes into this individual, we would like to see somebody away from the basketball make a cut. Usually this man is in the best position. He might drive his man to the basket. If he does, that takes that defensive player out of it. We would like to see this man, when the ball goes in here, to automatically move into what we call flare position. If he does that, that puts him in a three-point shooting situation so that if his man goes after the postman, he can flare the ball out. This man, obviously, is going to come in and react to what his defensive player does. If this defensive player comes to the postman, he's going to step to the basket. If he doesn't, he, this deep offensive player is going to try to go in and get rebound position or clear himself back into an open area for a shot. The person who passed the basketball can go to one of two spots. He can go into the elbow or he can drop down and fill one of these positions. So a simple pass inside of the defense and now you've created a lot of problems and the defense has to adjust to that or you're going to get a very easy shot. Now we've discussed about throwing the ball into the block or post position. Let's talk about the second pass, which really presents a lot of opportunity for good close-in scoring opportunities and the possibility of playing both sides of the court, which is another area that we have to talk about later on. When this man is in this position, and this man is in a press position here, if this person is guarding in that position, then what you have is an open spot in this court, and we would like to see him break into that area to catch the basketball. This man has to know how to read this. He can't watch the basketball. He is sitting behind the defense, and he gets to look at that, much like you do when you play against the zone. We tell him his two keys are this. We want him to come across that court when he is open and when he is needed. 
either one of those situations occur and we want to see that player up here on this side of the court. If we throw him the basketball, then everybody else has to be able to react. The ball is placed here. This individual again goes into a three-point shooting situation or depending upon his abilities, he might make a cut and what we would call a blindside cut so that he could receive a bounce pass here or something delivered back here if he went directly to the basket. We would like to see the postman read his man and if he was on the baseline side and the ball is played here, we would like to see him step him to the bucket. Now, the help man on this offense obviously is going to be the one farthest from the play. So we want to make sure that we keep him busy. When that ball is played here, these other people react. We want him to go there, and we're going to step down, screen him, and bring him for a shot. Now, in this situation again, we have kept every defensive player busy. We've given ourselves a chance to get the ball to the basket. We have it in the center of the floor. We have the opportunity to play both sides of the court. And we can bring it back to the strong side for a shot coming out of the corner. We talked about hitting this man coming across the lane because there is pressure on this individual here, defensive pressure. Now we want to examine reversing the basketball because this man is back in here helping with the post and preventing this man from coming across the lane. A simple reverse pass, which we call a point pass. When that ball is played there, we want the postman again to react to his defensive player. If he's on the low side, we'd like for him to pin him into the middle of the court. We would like for him, if he's on the high side, to simply spin out and get ready to get to the basket and get on the backboard in, in the event the ball is shot from this side. When this pass is made, we want this player again, who is spaced properly, now we want the timing. We want him to step up into this area so that he brings his defensive player and allows us to make this pass. This is one of the few times in the game of basketball that you can feed the postman or a cutter from the top. As you know, usually you feed a cutter from 45 degrees down or feed the postman from 45 degrees down. But this is a rare situation where you can take the basketball Take it and go right in over the top of your defensive player to your postman who has pinned his defensive player in the center of the court. When this player steps up, we would like then for this individual to recognize that as he steps down again, he's going to screen the player, screen that defensive player on the baseline. We have now isolated him on top. And as you go through all of this, you have to recognize that what we're trying to do is put players into position so they can perform the skills that they have or that they have developed. Now, in many of these situations, a player may find himself in a situation or in a position that he can't perform the skill. He has to recognize that. If he doesn't have a shot from this position, he shouldn't shoot the basketball, obviously. But if he does have a shot or he is a good one-on-one -on -one player over the top, this gives him an excellent time, an excellent position to perform skills that he has developed or skills that he already possessed. Now, when this play is made to here, we would like to throw the ball here and do a jab step or just go to there for a, what we call a two-man play, the oldest plays in the game, a screen play over the top, and he would shoot a jump shot. 
He looks for this man rolling through. He goes for the two shot. And now if he can't receive it, he goes on. Here comes this man and he's bringing the ball back to the other side and you have stretched the defense out. You have shooting opportunities here and you have a shooting opportunity over here with pressure on the basket. Now we have gone to all the players on the court, the post, what we call the four man or the man across the lane, and to the point. Let's bring into play the final man, the one that probably everyone, every one of the defensive players, they're going to sag from this individual. Here is the play, and one of the plays, you can develop several obviously on your own, but here's one of the plays that we like to run at the University of Missouri. We'll throw the ball to the corner man, and now we're going to pull this post man up. We've only had two or three individuals here that we would really say are the big post man, block player, the guy that you can throw the ball to into the inside of that defense and he can make that power play. We try to move people and then throw the ball to the inside. We're going to throw this ball here and step him up. When he does, this man is stepping to that position. We have now cleared the lane and we are allowing this individual to step behind or go to the basket. When he does that, he may have the layup or he may have a close play right here beside the lane and at the basket. This is done on a count. Again, we're coming back to timing. When I throw the ball here, I should be able to be here at one. I throw the ball, one. This is one, he steps up. That play occurs, and now this individual who has the basketball has a one-on-one -on -one play. He might drive the lane, and he, and he winds up in a two-on-one -on -one with the individual across the lane. If nothing happens, then he reads the screen. If the defensive player is on this side, he comes back. If the defensive player is here, he tries to duck. Step to the basket, catch it for a layup. If not, he clears the lane. Timing again, he's an automatic screen for this man stepping in. This individual here, again, not having big players, but having active players and people who can shoot on the out court, step them out on the court, deliver the ball to them, and then get the perimeter shot. So when he lets this man clear off of him, he steps to here, catches a pass, turns and looks to the basket, and he may have the shot. We've had some very outstanding players that were able to do this. At the present time, we have a young man from Illinois, Derek Grimm. This is an excellent play for him because he can knock down the three. He can take a big player, bring him outside. If he doesn't, if he doesn't guard him out here, then he has an excellent scoring opportunity. But when this man moves in, this man has moved behind. You have now moved the players. And I think that is another key in offense moving players into sometimes unfamiliar territory, and if you can get your player into a territory where he can perform a skill that, again, he's developed, or you've helped him develop, or one that he already had, you have an excellent chance then to score.
Let's show you a breakdown drill with just three people. We're going to take the basketball, place it at the diagonal position, throw it to the postman, and then let these individuals react. If the ball went into the post or the block, then we want this man to move into that position. We want this individual to come to this position or to this position. The things that occur, postman catches it, he can turn and shoot. If he is bothered by this defensive player, he makes a flare pass, or he can hand it off to this person in the event that this defensive player comes back in from the top. That gives you all the options with those players involved in the game. That is a breakdown drill for the postman, the point man, and the diagonal player. Obviously, it's easy then to put a player in this position, put a player in this position, a player in this position, and do a three-man drill. Or to remove one and to have four people do it. Why have breakdown drills? Because I think the players begin to see the options better if you have just one, two, three options. Then add your fourth player, then add your fifth player. We've talked about a three-man drill, throwing the ball to the post. Here is a three-man drill, throwing the ball to what we call the four-man, the man behind the post, breaking in across the lane. When he steps in here, we throw him the basketball, and we want him, if he possesses that ability, to shoot the basketball. That would be the first option. We're going to come back and talk about individual development because we're going to show him some moves and some things that we want him to do in the event that he can't shoot the basketball. In this breakdown drill, we would like to have him shoot it, drop step it, or hit the postman who is pinning his man and rolling to the basket. When this player passes the ball, we have him go screen or go fill. And that, again, is a breakdown drill for three people, diagonal man, post player, and the man away from the basketball, which we call the four man. Here's another three man drill involving the four man. Instead of having the post player in here, we put the point player. The man comes across, man with the ball delivers, steps down or goes to screen. This man again sprints to this position or steps to the basket. Depending upon his abilities, great outside shooter, sprint. Good jumper, quickness, go to the basket and then flare. This player is coming in to shoot the basketball. He's going to look in. He can't shoot the basketball or hit the postman. He's going to bring it back, play this man, or bring it to this side of the court. Again, as we talked in the opening segment, He's got both sides of the court. He's in the middle of the floor where he can present great pressure for the defense. Now we're going to show you a reverse pass to the point man. There are several options, obviously, in every play, depending upon how the defense reacts to the passing of the basketball. But what we would like to start out with is a simple pass back across to the point with the understanding that the defense is back in here helping. We're going to step up on the outside. We're going to play the ball to him, and now we have a two-man play. Obviously, there's several reactions that you're going to get. The defense may jump into this line, but if he doesn't, you're going behind that screen for a jump shot. If you can't get in there for the jump shot, you continue on, and then this player steps between the defensive players and he has a jump shot or maybe turns it into the basket. After he passes the ball, he always goes to the baseline or fills an open spot. Again, a breakdown drill, options, simple options, one and two, no more than that to start with, but showing how these three players will react to one another when the ball is passed from the diagonal to the point. Now we're going to add one more man and show you another option so that you again can play both sides of the court, put great pressure on every defensive player. 
We don't have a postman. We know that we're going to use him if we make this point pass. We're going to try to step him to the basket. But in this breakdown drill, what we want to work on is the two-man play with this player going off. But we also want to work on the timing of bringing the ball here, having him step through, and bringing it to a shooter who was started on the original strong side of the court. This is an excellent play against sagging defenses or against teams that tried to help out with the corner man. Now we have a breakdown drill of three people working off of a corner pass. The diagonal player, the corner man, and the post player. The ball is delivered to the corner man. The post man steps up, he steps here, and then he goes one side or the other trying to catch the ball for the layup. In all of these situations, what you're encouraging the players to do is to react to the defense. If this player steps up, this player is overplaying, we want him to drive. As he starts to step up, if the defense comes with him, we want him to roll back to the basket. We want this player to step in. If the player goes back, we want him to come back to this position. I think it's really important for you to emphasize to your players that offense is strictly an organization whereby you're trying to create an advantage for your offense. Take advantage of defensive mistakes. Offensive basketball. I think that the players must understand that spacing and timing are extremely important. Getting into position where they can perform the skills that they have developed or that they just possess. Taking the basketball to the basket, playing it to the center of the floor, playing both sides of the court, keeping everyone involved, having an opportunity to score, have an opportunity to get the ball back, and defensive balance when you shoot the basketball are all priority. If you can work and work and do these most of the time, you can have a good offense. All drills and exercises in this videotape are designed to develop fundamental skills. It is extremely important as an athlete or coach that you execute them with proper technique in order to avoid possible injury. To reduce the risk of possible injury, consult your doctor before beginning this exercise or skill development program. The producers, participants, and distributors of this program disclaim any liabilities or loss in connection with the information presented in this tape.